Welcome to the Soul Sisters series, where you'll get thought-driven, inspiring topics for your soul with Vaughn Solis and Brenda Rachel. Okay, so here we are. Uh, with part 12 of the Soul Sisters. Welcome. I'm Vaughn. I'm Brenda. And, and together, together, we are the Soul Sisters. <laughs> That's a nice uh, kickoff to the episode. It gets us in the energy, doesn't it? It sure does. Yes. Because we can be here like seriously just before I hit record and kind of go, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> and Brenda's like, I don't know what I'm going to say. Right. And then that button, the record goes on and we're with you and uh, the angels start filtering in and uh, we just get into the zone, don't we? We do. We of, do. Of what our mission is, which is yep. consciousness expansion, mm-hmm. you know, uh, inspiration, mm-hmm. healing, anything else? Um, I think encouragement, support. Yeah. yeah. All kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And we have a growing audience, and I've always believed, as do you, that the people that are meant to find uh, this information and any information really on your journey to do any of those things that we just mentioned, um, that information finds us, doesn't it? It sure does. So what we talk about, uh, you know, we offer a conversation, so you get to listen to sisters who just talk and you know, we talk our way through things and uh, what we're going through is we're growing and expanding our consciousness because I believe that we expand right to our deathbed, basically. Absolutely. Our physical deathbed. I absolutely agree with that. You know, it's the journey is never over to what we can know and learn for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and, and life, hey, on this planet is just, you know, it challenges us. We never sort of, I think, get away from the challenges because even if they're not ours personally or we're not really, you know, uh, impacted directly, it's happening to people all around us. Mm-hmm. Stuff, 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 stuff we may have gone through years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not talking right now the stuff that is our core um, foundational piece to this. So the information is just going to find you. And then, um, you know, you'll resonate with your teachers, the teachings, right, mm-hmm. um, as you move along through life. We've had a few decades on the planet now. So if you're joining us and you are in earlier years, uh, trust that your journey will unfold and the information will come to you to help you with whatever you need uh, the moment you allow it to um, enter your life. And I just mean by that, you're making a conscious effort to say, I need, I want more in my life. Right. And that's what we're here um, to provide you. So today is kind of sis a little bit of a continuation of last week. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, decided to keep going with the the series, um, you know, past the original nine episodes, which um, explain all our journey and how we got to where we are today, uh, respectively. Me from uh, you know bereavement, the pain and suffering of bereavement, losing my child to suicide. Uh, Jenea at the age of 22 in 2005 and uh, Brenda with your, you can speak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, just my uh, de- debilitating illnesses and, yeah. uh, and uh, yeah, disabilities. Dis- disabilities. Yeah. Right. right. That led me to a conscious suicide attempt. Right. And that was really the, uh, Brenda was uh, from a diagnosis of fibro in her early forties with a wheelchair bound um, mm-hmm. prognosis. So both of us coming from these um, major life events, right, right, um, that some people go through, everybody goes through stuff, mm-hmm. events are a little different from like just challenges and, you know, but it could be an event. If it's an event that's impacted your life and given you trauma or illness or, mm-hmm. you know, anything, I mean, even getting fired, you could be oh, suicidal, exactly. I mean, anything, mm-hmm. If it's an event, life event for you, it's a life event. And traditionally, they sort of consider marriage, birth, death, you know, mm-hmm. big life events. They so could even be, you know, a lobing and stuff. But you could look them up and see what a life event truly is. But death is certainly one. Illness is certainly one. Mm-hmm. And we both live with a condition, let's just say, that um, is never going to go away. Mm-hmm. So today, there's no cure for fibro. No. Nope. There's certainly no... Uh, cure for bereavement 
once you're bereaved, you're always bereaved. I spoke with a psychologist recently who actually said that grief never goes away. It just changes. That's interesting. So there are different opinions on whether or not um, we will always live with grief. I don't have an opinion today about that. Not really. I'm in between that. But whatever it is for you, um, whatever discomfort, if not suffering, one has in their life, you may have in your life, or you just want to expand your thinking because being human isn't enough for you, just in in the body. And we uh, got into our spiritual journeys decades, decades ago. Mm -hmm. So again, once enlightened, even a teeny weeny tiny light bulb moment that Mm -hmm. goes, oh, there's more, or you have some amazing experience and Mm -hmm. go into infinity for a brief moment in a meditation, anything that shows you wow, there's stout stuff, stuff out there. I can't see it. Mm-hmm. I have to trust it. Mm-hmm. And you make a commitment to that. The world just opens up to you. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. People call them miracles, right? But limitless possibilities. I think it opens, it opened my consciousness to understanding that I'm the creator of my reality, but also that I can have anything that I choose to have mm-hmm. and consciously can accept for myself to have. So I have to be able to receive what I'm asking for. Yeah. I think one of the complications um, uh, right now in uh, the world and has been for a few decades is that when we talk about being able to create the life you want, mm-hmm. largely it's um, it's in the context of wealth and mm-hmm. money. Let's just be honest, mm-hmm. money, mm-hmm. hard currency, mm-hmm. how much you own. So the ma- the amount of materialistic stuff you have, materialism, mm-hmm. um, determines uh, to others, it, 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 it shows you and others how successful you are. I could buy a great big house, the car, the boat, travel, wear all these fancy, expensive clothes, therefore I am successful. Mm -hmm. And um, they got into this, um, you know, definition of success uh, by means of of, uh, currency wealth. Wealth is currency um, in terms of, you know, money and um, materialistic things. Mm -hmm. Um, Certainly, certainly all through the 20th century. I'm not that old, but just from stuff, um, you know, going back to, um, I'd say the seventies, early eighties is when I, early eighties is when I got into it, 1981. And before that, you know, you're still kind of on the cusp of writers, you know, kind of, of, um, using and talking about consciousness, what we think, uh, we, uh, feel and, um, determines our health for example. And, um, and so there's way, way, way more advanced work on that decades later. But if you go back to say, uh, the 19th century, even the 18th century, and you, you know, and, and there was quite a spiritual movement amongst writers, artists, and, you know, you'll read about, you know, I studied English in university, so you'll read about how they got together and they would have these, you know, amazing conversations, sometimes seances and things like that. And or even if you watch movies uh, of the era and you'll see that the spiritual component, um, you know, or in the writings of poets in that they often reference what we talk about today. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool because um, it really didn't revolve around um, money. Mm -hmm. It was more the consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, uh, that's just something that I just want to say. So when we say we're living the way we want to live Mm -hmm. and any other person that you meet and admire and is living the way they want to live and, you know, they may be living in a log cabin on an acre, you know, with a little lake in front of them, which would not indicate anything, um, you know, sort of demonstrative of of extreme wealth. So it's about the wealth you feel inside. Mm -hmm. To that person, that could be the epitome of everything they need and want Mm -hmm. to feel complete and whole Mm -hmm. um, and content on this planet. Mm -hmm. So certainly when I, and I would wager you, talk about creating the life, living the life you want, it is within the context of what we feel that completes us rather than what we are. (laughs) Yeah, I was just sitting here listening to what you're saying, and my whole assessment of what my my um, journey has been, has never included wealth. 
at yeah. all. Yeah. Never. It's never been important to you, has it? No. It's interesting. No. And and you're a person that would give the shirt off your back to someone else and often, well, you know, mm -hmm. almost, almost the shirt off her back. Yeah, I would, I help, would help, help anybody at any time if, if yeah. I could. Yeah, very giving and never thinking like, so if you want to buy a bouquet of flowers for someone, you don't sit there and go, hmm, do I have enough money that's mm -hmm. 20, 30 bucks in the bank I'm, I I don't have, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a, uh, that's a you know, trait of yours that's really quite admirable and and, um, and wonderful. It's just part of who you are and yeah. who you came to the planet to be. Mm -hmm. A very giving person, a, you know, a selfless person. And your needs are minimal. I can't tell, tell you how many times I remember you giving all your stuff away and starting over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like. Even it, it seems like your natural. So what? What more can I give away? Because I don't need it. Right. Right. Because I don't need it. Right. And I'm actually going through that process right now, looking around in right. my place and just deciding what in here do I really have? I used it in the last ten years or fifteen years or whatever. And yeah, do I really need it? Yeah. Not that wherever, if it was on a shelf or in a cupboard or whatever, that I need that room for something else. So it's not taking up space for something. Yeah. It's just. It's not doing anything. So yeah. there, maybe somebody else could use it. So I was just going through that uh, yeah. about the last couple of weeks. The thing is also when you, the the more expanded your consciousness becomes, mm -hmm. and all of our episodes in the Soul Sister series uh, are are rooted in consciousness expansion, mm -hmm. um, but how arriving at it uh, and um, wanting to pursue it uh, in different contexts. And, and those episodes offer a variety of contexts in which we uh, pursue and don't give up mm -hmm. when we're on that path. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, today we're talking about the large I am, I am all caps as source, mm -hmm. uh, the supplier, if you will, consciousness, um, our provider, our God, uh, the universe, in whatever name you want to ascribe it, uh, versus the small, I am, okay, small mm -hmm. uh, letters. And that came to us one day uh, sitting, having chai out. Yep. And um, yep. we were talking about how we come to the planet. Okay, well, there are those that believe we come to the planet to suffer, and we did all about uh, that in part 11. So we've we've talked all about that in previous episodes. Are we here to suffer? Or are we not here to suffer? Mm -hmm. um, that's not the point of today's uh, uh, conversation. What we are looking at is our um, consciousness. The more we expand and the more we feel at one, mm -hmm. the more we can separate from ego. So the small I am representing ego, the all caps I am representing, I'll just say source today, mm -hmm. source and ego. Yep. Um, when we, uh, you know, how, when we get into that, the ego, right, to recognize that we're in it and what to do to get out of it mm -hmm. and goes, just stop, you know. And so when we were talking about coming to the planet, and I and I made this comment to you, well, it's like a smorgasbord of suffering. Mm -hmm. You take your choice, mm -hmm. and um, and then we're like, oh, well, we could talk about a smorgasbord of suffering. And then I went, you know what? Let's kind of exhaust them because it's already exhausted, and it's kind of exhaust them because, um, it's so all encompassing for so many people and the planet itself. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, um, take your pick. But so instead of doing that, we went, you know what? So let's just focus on the um, I am. So the, I think we made a comment about, oh, like when, oh, I'm tired. I am feeling not well. I am whatever it is. I am in the negative though. I am broke. I am miserable. I am mad at my partner. I am whatever the I am is, which if you stop and really think and count how many times we say it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, many. I think it's, it's so subconscious and yeah, even to a point like unconscious that we use that terminology to start a sentence. And yet when you yeah. have the opportunity is when we were talking and all, all of a sudden went, wow, this would be a great topic to talk about the I am all caps versus the I am smaller letters. And while well, the I 
Yeah, and the I am smaller letters. And no, the I is even small. The, oh, it is I dot. Oh, I dot. I dot. Okay. Small I. Okay. Small so, A M. Oh, yeah. It it, yeah. it takes the so so uh, so what we were so what we were going at, uh, what this led me to think about immediately is um and it was like a light bulb moment for me um was um if you thought of yourself as i am as source all encompassing powerful source i am all caps surely to goodness we wouldn't sit there and go i am sick mm-hmm. i am broke Mm-hmm. I am angry. I am anything. Mm-hmm. Because all you know in that consciousness mm-hmm. is perfection, mm-hmm. wholeness, mm-hmm. love, mm-hmm. contentment, completeness. Correct. Right? Correct. And so the point of our conversation, I don't know how long this is going to be. I don't know how deep we can go other than just to sort of have you think about it and give some examples here. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's to, I'll just throw this out and then turn it over to you. But it, for me, it's to, when I get in those small, I am moments Mm -hmm. that are completely ego, it's, it's little Vaughn and little human body Mm -hmm. where something has triggered me Mm -hmm. and angered me or made me fearful or anxious or whatever it is. Okay. But it's always in the negative. Usually if you stop and think about it. I mean, and I'm not talking about I'm busy right now. Somebody calls and I'm busy. I'm not mm-hmm. talking about that. We're talking this is strictly emotional here, mental, emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, it's usually always in the negative mm-hmm. because if you train yourself, mm-hmm. you know, when you're feeling successful, when you're feeling content, when you're feeling wealthy, when you're feeling your world is just amazing. Mm-hmm. And we don't hear that enough from each other, mm-hmm. right? We, we really, I think, almost have been taught not to boast or scream from the rooftops our joy. Mm -hmm. And if someone is screaming from the rooftops their joy, Mm -hmm. everyone stops to look at them Mm -hmm. and kind of go, "How? How? what happened? How did they get that? (laughs) Think of weddings. Mm -hmm. You ever stop by a wedding in a park Mm -hmm. and you stop for a moment? I mean, most most people do. Just to have a little look at the happy bride and groom or bride and bride or groom and groom, whatever it is today, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it triggers an instant understanding of their joy Mm -hmm. it's triggering that it's it's actually triggering the wrong word but spreading that out from them because they they just can't help but be so joyful in those moments Mm -hmm. and we feel it Mm -hmm. as soon as we see it the outfits are symbolic Mm -hmm. of that joy Mm -hmm. so the i am is symbolic capital i am is symbolic Mm -hmm. of that same thing that I believe is at the center authentically for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's being buried, Mm -hmm. um, hidden, Mm -hmm. um, you know, like a little treasure for us to discover. Yep. And it completely changes in a a heartbeat, instant. I am, so I am small. I am sick. Want to get rid of it? I am all caps healed or feel tremendous right at this moment mm-hmm. you know it's another bit of a yeah, of a of a not a difficult conversation or a complicated subject but it, it's it's one to maybe we have to think about that yeah. we maybe have to think about well i also think that it's not to deny the true state of what we're in if we're feeling sick i am sick i am sick mm-hmm. i think the thing that i lo- want to focus on for myself is with the all caps is that that's where I can take myself from the small letters. Okay. So it's not for me to sit there and say, I can never say again, I am unwell or I'm not feeling good or I am panicked or I'm yeah. an, having an anxiety attack or all the things that I go through. It's okay. How do I get from the small to the large, from, from the human small letters to source caps and um that's the gift that keeps on giving as as we progress because the i am caps never goes away exactly. it's that we can reach we can reach for that pinnacle 
at any moment. You can put it at the top of a piece of paper and put it on your fridge or whatever, have it on your computer and just look at that, just I am, and say, what are three things I am in, uh, through, through source right now? And whether it's I am at peace or I am joyful or I am receptive, I am open to receiving goodness today. I am open to harmony, you know, beautiful, all these things. Or oh, I am living harmoniously. Yeah. So this is like a little coaching tutorial for you. Mm -hmm. Instead of on, on uh, you know, a webinar, mm -hmm. we're, we'll do it this way for you. So as you're talking, mm -hmm. because we haven't talked about this. We, we no, talked about this. We about that chai. We came up with the that. title and went, oh, this would be a great title. And we'll just have to see where it goes. And we, yeah, so I, um, I will, will say that I don't consciously remember it all the time, but here's the thing. When you're aware of something, it's easy to go back to it. Yes. Yes. And go, wait a minute. I remember that now. Yeah. yeah. So as you were talking, the small I am to the capital mm -hmm. I am, we'll go the large I am. Mm -hmm. And you said the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I am all caps is the pinnacle. Mm -hmm of what I want to be feeling and expressing mm -hmm. in this body mm -hmm. going forward for the rest of my incarnation. Mm -hmm. So it says, I so, so how I wrote it down while you were speaking is it's a representation of who we are mm -hmm. and who we all are mm -hmm. and what I am striving to be at all times mm -hmm. in my inner state. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I wrote is it's an inner state. All caps I am is the inner state that creates the outer state. Right. And I think also, too, for me, it's my absolute most um, spiritual connection with source whenever I start something with an I am, because that's my acknowledgement that everything in that state comes from source. And it's not... The physical me, right. right, in some kind of lower state of mind on on the planet. I am in my absolute deepest connection with Source, with the capital I am. Yes. So I think we've made it pretty clear how we, mm -hmm. just you and me, mm -hmm. uh, consider that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah again, trans is for me. This isn't to try and and have any of you adapt this as your philosophy or, right. or way of wanting to live. This is totally where I'm coming from and my own living experience. Right. And spiritual so, experience. For me, it's kind of like a, a strategy, an instant strategy I can use to get myself out of a state, small I am, the lower state. Mm -hmm. Let's just call it lower and higher. Sure. I love that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Lower and higher. Yep. See? Well, because we come to this well, while we're talking. Because that's what it's all our case and higher. <laughs> angel, angel. <laughs> Cat, that's how stuff comes to us, okay? <laughs> but it's true. So the lower uh the lower uh state, the higher state. Um and there has been debate about I am mm -hmm. uh for millennia, probably. So we come here with this I am, which also is a uh, pronouncement, if you will, of our individuality. Right. And the higher state I am is the collective, mm -hmm. uh, the connection mm -hmm. to one. So our collective as humans on this planet, whether we like it or not, and all spiritual practitioners, mm -hmm. uh, both as leaders uh, coaches and students understand that from the very beginning, right. we are one, right? And the I am is all caps I am and in, 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 inclusive, inclusive, it's inclusive of all humanity on this yeah. planet, right? And the ego, right? The small, the lower I am, right? Mm -hmm. Is you know the human, essentially us without recognition of that greater power that we all right. have within that the connection gives us right so you know it, i uh, the small i am is we're not tapping into our our true potential that we came here to be 
which is spiritual beings on this planet. Our potential and our power. And our power, right. Our potential and our power. Mm -hmm. And when I talk a lot about personal power, and I've been talking about it since basically uh, 2006 when I uh, when I wrote Divine Healing, and that book is based on um, on uh, complete, um, you know, uh, transformation by by understanding and claiming your personal power, uh, transforming pain into personal power is the subtitle of that, and um, so. Your work is all in, in, um, you don't really frame it in personal power, your work, do you? No. But mine is. And I, and, you know, and, and so personal power is something we're starting to see more of as language today as well. It's very interesting. It's, it's not as kind of like, um, you know, an isolating a phrase as it was back in the early 2000s, certainly when I was the mid early 2000s when I was writing Divine Healing. But the, uh, that book, a large part of it was channeled to me by angels and my daughter on the other side. So I had to write it, even if I didn't maybe connect to it, I understood it. But culturally, we're just at that point, and, and even today, we're not talking a whole heck of a lot about personal power, personal power, personal power, right, right. not in the sense of our inner being. Mm -hmm. And, um, what we what we really have as a capability what we really are capable of doing which really to make it simple guys is just creating a life we want and having things be easy not difficult right. and having everything roll into our lap right. right 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 which people call magic or miracles mm -hmm. we live like that don't we mm -hmm. oh and so does my son Right. Mm -hmm. And and so we might and my husband, I mean, he can't help but benefit. But I guess I'll give him a nod and say he does believe in this stuff, too. <laughs> but you're welcome. <laughs> but, you know, I, there are so many examples of manifestations in my life and your life mm -hmm. and certainly my son's mm -hmm. that um, because I raised him this way. And my daughter isn't here anymore, but I raised her the same, so she would have benefited too. She probably was already, but you know, so I have to keep it to just my son. But I taught him, and so for me, it's so much fun to watch another generation, yeah, who poo poos this stuff, by the way. Yeah. Um, but then, oh, gets everything he wants, everything he wants, okay. Um, right down to the color of a vehicle, right down to the job he wants. Now, these things can take time. Um, and so for any of you with this consciousness, even being influenced by it, like my son, or maybe you're an adult child of a parent that's raised you this way and life's just really easy. And I'm not talking about, you know, the golden spoon here or silver spoon and being handed everything. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about seeing examples of having, say, a spiritual parent or a parent with a spiritual practice who has taught you, you know, life doesn't have to be hard. We can really manifest and get what we want. What is it that you really want? Because the other big piece of this is two things. Um, and I want to get your opinion or our thoughts on this. Is one, we have to know what we want, right? Which can change, right? And then the second thing is um, the time piece. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it ha it takes a little while. Right. I was just going to interject there and just say, so we have to know what we want mm -hmm. and not give it any kind of time frame. Mm -hmm. So the bigger thing, like anything, actually, yeah. anything. Oh, yeah, absolutely anything. But not to set like it, that it has to be in a month or two months. Right. Whatever. Right. Because some things may come much quicker mm -hmm. than... Mm -hmm. You ever thought I ever thought possible things manifested, and other times, not so, not so much. And the reason I believe this is because all the pieces. Sometimes what we want, mm -hmm. there are other players, mm -hmm. and often, say if it's a job that you're really really wanting, sometimes, boom, you're going to get it like right away. Mm -hmm. Other times, the right 
place for you mm-hmm. has to open up through a series of other events exactly. exactly that are happening and it's like a chessboard with all these pieces moving around mm-hmm. actually like dominoes even mm-hmm. and sometimes if i spend too much time thinking about all the people affected and everything has to move in in like this complete perfect formation mm-hmm. for everyone to go where they're meant to go to mm-hmm. it's amazing yep and I will wager almost anyone you ever talk to, if you're if and, and if you're living your like life like this already, yay, you'll you'll totally be sitting there. I got you, I get you, I get you. If you're not and you're going, mm, yeah, sounds great for you, um, or sounds great, get me in on this, okay? Really, it is a matter of learning the power, understanding and trusting that power one has to believe Mm -hmm. and and so you want something Mm -hmm. you know nobody is you know unfamiliar with the concept of intending manifesting brendan and i have talked about that before we really don't have a structured intention manifestation practice Mm -hmm. because we work with angels Mm -hmm. and have for so long now Mm -hmm. it's just a we do the request up Mm -hmm. and basically get it Mm -hmm. we just wait and and they we get it and if we don't it's because something better came along Mm -hmm. okay quite frankly and i'll be honest you know maybe something doesn't turn out i said before in one of our episodes i for fun keep a word document with all my my requests Mm -hmm. requests that cause me or have they don't anymore but you know anxiety oh i really need that to work out i really need that to work out Mm -hmm. i'm i think at page 40 uh, on on my table and i chart the date i asked what i asked for the date that something occurred, whether it was fulfilled or something different happened. Mm-hmm. I had a request on there, it's like uh, maybe two years old. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll be honest, that one was for my son to be directed to the exact perfect job that he um, had identified, you know, he somewhat that he really wanted. And it just actually occurred um, uh, this past week. Mm-hmm. And it is now I know it's like a mom, I can kind of go, okay, great. He's on his way on, he's on his, he's on his way on his path. And I'm sharing that with you because he's in his early thirties. And this is a time for some of you, if you're watching this as millennials and even younger, but certainly in your thirties, maybe a little older and you're making changes. You're in that part of your life where some are settling down, some are getting, you know, you know, into a relationship, having families. Um, making different career choices or, or, you know, wanting to be promoted and move up in their career, things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the twenties can be a really, um, you know, thought provoking decade where you're trying to figure out what you even want to kind of do and you get into it and, and, and then have to really rethink a game to set you up for a different period in, in your life, which it's really interesting because I was reading about how the thirties sort of are this period I just talked about. So to me, it's sort of a period of a stability mm-hmm. and um, and a foundation mm-hmm. for the rest of the adulthood. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm seeing that in in my my son. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just giving that as an example because so he's kind of like my star um, coaching client. Mm-hmm. And um, okay, I would be really really wealthy if I charged him for all my time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but anyway, it's really interesting because I get to see uh, whether my ideas that I have for him and and how I encourage and support and coach him based on everything we're talking about, right? You can do this, you got, you know, and then seeing the stuff fall in his lap where it looks uh, to other people like, um, well, that's just not possible. He actually just had someone say, what you're doing is just not possible. Well, guess what it was? Mm -hmm. And in a very speedy time frame. Mm -hmm. So it's so much fun also to live like this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because we know Mm -hmm. and we, you know, we trust that what we want and um, the things that you want, by the way, they never go away. That's a very deep seated. No, I really want this, mm-hmm. right? And other things that we go, oh, I think I might like that or whatever. You know, if if it eventually kind of, you know, yeah, no, not so much, or you forget about it or whatever. And I'm, this is the time piece we're talking about, right? And when you have to wait, mm-hmm. that waiting period before you actually see something become very real in your life, 
it could also give me the, us the opportunity to kind of go, yeah, maybe I don't want that. Mm-hmm. And that's happened to me plenty of times. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just interject here because most of the things that I ask for aren't material. And mm-hmm. so I like, what would be an exit? I don't have the, uh, the last thing that I asked for that I got was my apartment across the way here, mm-hmm. almost well, well, going into my fourth year. And I had requested from where I was living that the next place I wanted would be a top floor and that I'd be close to you. Yeah. And so I got that within five days, 10 days, because I moved within 23 days from yeah. my former place to here. And we're neighbors. And we're neighbors. And we can see each other from each oh, other's balconies. Yes. So we're, we're wearing so that buildings. But you know what? Like that. Yes. What I was going to say, though. Getting a top floor where we live on Vancouver Island mm-hmm. in an oceanside small city, mm-hmm. yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, and that was when I say top, so it was a four, fourth floor, so they have like yeah, not not a lot of large buildings, but in, in any event, yeah. it's not an ocean view and it's nothing like that. Like these, my sister and brother in law have, but they have a spectacular, beautiful view from their place, which I get to enjoy when I'm here. But I'm just saying, so that. Mine's more for healing and for mm-hmm. peace of mind, yeah, and for um, just having different things that come out of the blue for me that I have to deal with, and I get mm-hmm. an anxiety about to yeah. help me through those processes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting point you're making because I'm sitting here going, "When's the last time I asked for something material? Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I doubt it. I I just don't because I have everything I need. Mm-hmm. I really do." And if I need something, I know I'm going to get it. Mm-hmm. Just I can get it. Mm-hmm. So for me, it would be more things like reducing anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll ask for things for my son. Yep. I might ask things for my sister, but you know, it's it's just it's more along the lines of for us for sure. Keeping this just between you and me. Mm-hmm. What Brenda just talked about: mm-hmm. uh, good health, mm-hmm. um, recovery. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, calm, peace, contentment, mm-hmm. things like that. So bringing it back to you, mm-hmm. um, because we're the ones sharing here and have been at this practice for so, so long mm-hmm. uh, in our respective lives, decades, um, four decades over four, 43 years for me, 43, 44. Mm-hmm. No, 40, we'll go, we'll go 43. Mm-hmm. And you probably almost 50, I don't know, 48. I don't know, but decade. A long time. A long time. Okay, so this is like, we've had our own things that we've had to learn along the way and expand, expand, expand. But when you've been in this long enough, mm-hmm. it comes down to really a couple of really, two really basic, basic things. Mm-hmm. You know, believe, trust, and have faith. Exactly. Three things. Believe, trust, and have faith. Yep. Right? Yep. Know, know thyself and believe, trust, and have faith that you can create what you want. Mm-hmm. And how you do that then is by asking for the right guidance, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The right tools, mm-hmm. the right people to come into your life, mm-hmm. the right community mm-hmm. to be a support for you, mm-hmm. um, awareness, mm-hmm. insight, mm-hmm. courage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just going to throw in here. I know you, you might want to add to your list, but yep. always, always for my highest and best. Yes. Always. We yeah. only want things for our absolute highest and yep. best. Yeah. And that I and I forgot to add that because okay. I do actually say it in my morning. Mm-hmm. I have a morning ritual uh, that I go through for myself, just mentally, mm-hmm. um, for my highest and best. And the highest and best of all others concerned, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, for us, the angels have made this just so much more impacting, hey? Well, we just know before we put out our request that it's going to be answered. Yeah. It, it might not be yeah. answered exactly yeah. how we're asking it. Mm-hmm. There might be something that's not quite exactly that way, but it absolutely will be answered. And and, and always in a positive manner. Yeah. Always. And if it's a different result for us, yeah. Um. And um, so I'm trying to think of an example because uh, this this wouldn't for me be related to say a health or anxiety because that's always answered. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, you know, so say if it's something I've asked for my son like to be directed or for me, 
I'll give you an example. Here's a, here's an, a recent example. So this isn't exactly materialistic, but it is uh, opportunity. Mm. So um, so my husband and I are going traveling in December for a few months to Southeast Asia. And one night, maybe about three or four weeks ago, I got this like epiphany to do um, pet sitting abroad. So fast forward, it was all arranged and we got our first gig within, you know, two weeks. And I didn't even apply like to go on this platform for at least a week, a week and a half, because I was like, no, I need to think about this. I need to think about this. And um, when we decided on the Monday, okay, let's join. So we joined the platform and this is like maybe two weeks ago now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, by Wednesday, we had our first local uh, sit on an island. Uh, that's actually like literally we can see the island <laughs> yeah. and you know so and we can come home if we need to or my husband but you know it's like one little 20 minute ferry ride for us and we're going to look after these two little pooches so I was open to that so the larger picture was how cool would this be if we could do this in Southeast Asia a little bit we get to spend some time with animals purpose of the platform because we no longer own animals we currently do a little uh, little pet sitting for a, a friend of ours uh, with a cat and a dog. So we get our little cuddles that way, and we totally love animals. And thirdly, you know, there are so many benefits, but thirdly, we can maybe meet some cool expats in different countries. And, you know, and a, a primary reason for a lot of people, but it shouldn't be this, is that it can save on accommodation costs while you're traveling. So, um, so just saying, to get that first gig within like a few days of getting on the platform... But here's what I want to say. It wasn't the one I thought I needed to go to. Okay. Okay. And which was cats and on another island mm -hmm. close to us. And so at first I was a little bit like, well, okay, this didn't work out. But I'm just trusting the process. I'm going, okay, it's dogs. It's a different island. Same period of time. We got the gig. That's where we're meant to go. And so the other piece I want to say in this is once you trust believe, have faith, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you have to get, you know, better at it mm -hmm. because it can be very hard in the beginning when you first start this kind of practice mm -hmm. um, to get to that point where you just, yep, yeah, request in, letting it go. And then, oh yeah, I got that. Um, so some people sit there and like they're watching the clock and, um, or they don't have enough uh, insight yet to understand that what they're getting is better than what they asked for, mm -hmm. right? Like there are different things that can make a people give up mm -hmm. uh, or it's not quick enough. Um, it depends what you're asking for. A lot of people, and this is where I'm going back to what we started with, um, success and manifesting is rooted in uh, a lot of times. You want that sports car, you want that luxury holiday, you know, the material stuff that um okay maybe you really wanted that but maybe you just think that you want that and need that because you'll have a better life and it'll get you out of your current crappy situation or whatever it is manifesting and change always has to start within mm -hmm. to give you the constant mm -hmm. transformation mm -hmm. and the trust and and the faith and the belief because really what you're doing is you're believing in yourself as a partner with source right I, so i'd say and to start with believing mm -hmm. and then trusting mm -hmm. and then having the faith that it's going to unfold the way it should for our heart, for your heart, yours or mine, higher, the highest, yeah. the best. Yeah. And that faith piece mm -hmm. is so important because the faith piece isn't just for an intention to, to you know, no, uh, no. manifest. Right. The faith piece is um, our testament mm -hmm. to the relationship we have mm -hmm. with source. Mm -hmm. And um, and by the way, this isn't too different from people who are are um, uh, fundamentally religious, or you know, they're, they're traditionally religious. And so, it's it's not like the spiritual metaphysical practice we're talking about here. It's all rooted in going to church, yep. reading the Bible, and trusting God will deliver. Mm -hmm. It's not that dissimilar from what we're talking well, about here. I say, and the the whole thing with um, um, having faith. Is for me letting go and letting God, yeah, God, Spirit, Source, yeah, Divine, yeah, whatever, and just letting go, yeah. So we were both raised Christian, mm -hmm. uh, have Christian roots, mm -hmm. 
and uh, expanded. We expanded that individually and at different ages in into a spiritual practice, which for me, and I'll ask you uh, what you think, but for me, the only real difference is from being just um, fundamentally Christian mm -hmm. is that I feel a part of God mm -hmm. and I have a right to ask for help from God and angels mm -hmm. and... Um, I live as that sort of spark mm -hmm. and that that is what as soul and spirit, we are a spark of that infiniteness, yep. infinity, that omnipresence, mm -hmm. just a teeny tiny spark, which gives me the personal power mm -hmm. to understand that I can be here and enjoy and have a wonderful, abundant life in every way that I so desire. Mm -hmm. And that may not be 10 million bucks in my bank account, mm -hmm. right? Because I understand money doesn't buy happiness. For me, I'm not going after the millions of dollars in the bank account because that's not what I need and I want. I'm quite comfortable with what I have. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably another episode on its own. And, and I'm not sure that we're gonna do that, but understanding what it is that you really, really want mm -hmm. Um, and, but it is important to understand what we're talking about here in terms of the, uh, believe, uh, trust and faith, because when you start out and if you learn from, um, teachers or books or YouTube or wherever you're learning from, um, that, you know, you've got this ability to intend something and manifest it. And man, if you're not living like, you know, top of your A game, you're missing something. Mm -hmm. Um, well, then you're always possibly going to be going after things that you're really not checking in with your heart, mm -hmm. your purpose, mm -hmm. your true desires, your true nature, your character of what it is uh, you want and how you really want to be living mm -hmm. and surrounded by because it's not the money piece. The money will come. All that stuff will come if that's in fact what you need to support how you want to really be living. Well, yeah, and I guess for me, I'd just say it's not any kind of like, like let's put this out there and just let's see if it happens. Uh, it's oh. No, it's not about that. It's like there yeah. has to be a real connection to the commitment to asking Source, to mm -hmm. to, to working with Source mm -hmm. to, when we intend for something to happen and not treat it like it's some kind of, well, let's just see if this really works. Um, you have to have an innate belief that you deserve this and you are worth this and that you can achieve what you believe. Yeah, I just wrote down that you have to have a commitment to the mm -hmm. connection power mm -hmm. of the relationship to source mm -hmm. because that's what it is. It's this relationship mm -hmm. you have to the connection to the greater whole mm -hmm. source, as I say, call it whatever you want, in consciousness, call it God, whatever it is that gives us the peace and the knowing mm -hmm. that we're not alone, even when we think we are alone in any capacity in this human life, in our suffering, in our misery, mm -hmm. in our ill health, in our times of, of poorness, poverty, right? Certainly, we've both had financial struggles. Oh, my God. God. But not for a long time now for me anyway, and not for you either. But we got ourselves out of this, I'm Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, was, was, it was very, very charming yeah, for but, a long Yes, but we had trust and faith, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. And in our respective ways, yeah. there's a solution for everything. Yeah. And um, we got ourselves out of what we got into. So it's not like you get to skip the line mm -hmm. for either hardship suffering, relationship breakups, crappy jobs, you know, places you don't want to live. The list goes on and on and on and on. But until you finesse, work with and finesse your style, what you want, grow into who you um, authentically are, these challenges actually don't appear as challenges, which we talked about in another episode. They're not challenges anymore, really. It's just, okay, I got to deal with something. What's my solution? Right. And we are, are getting better, both of us, at going straight to the solution. Oh, yeah, absolutely, which is source for me. But mm -hmm. the other thing I'll say, too, is that if it doesn't manifest in the way that you put out to source, um, 
and you think like, this isn't what I asked for, then it's not about anything going wrong. It's just that at that time, from wherever your conscious state is, that that's what is manifested for your highest and best in that moment. And so things can, things could look different, differently come to you differently and in a different way than you even ever mm-hmm. met a thought that mm-hmm. they would. And it doesn't mean that mm-hmm. there was anything wrong in the delivery or asking, no. you know, believing that yeah. you, you deserve this. So. Yeah. There are a lot of moving pieces to this. So the other thing is um, uh, to consider uh, wherever you are on your journey uh, and with your experience living a, a life uh, committed to, um, you know, having source as your driving force. Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay. Source, is your, source is your driving force. Yes. And wait. Um, <laughs> I have to write this to all of you. Source is your driving that's, that's, force. That's, 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 Ooh, I like that. Anyway, uh, but the thing is, is because, you know, you can you can get in there uh, within that context, your purpose as you get older, um, as you get, you know, just just more in touch at any age with your purpose. But let's keep this to an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, and within that, your lessons, other stuff that happens, soul contracts, what you what you've contracted with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's it's there's all of that mm-hmm. to consider within the whole life, okay? What you study, what you become. The minute you involve other people in your life, the minute, and I'm talking intimately involved, so you're in a, re- in a committed relationship, you have children, you know, there could be contracts, things like that. There could be purpose that's related to other individuals. Mm-hmm. And so the highest good of everyone yes. must yes. be considered. Right must be considered well, yes i would say that if they're asking if the, the person out there is asking for things that involve other people and not just themselves then it's always for the highest and best of either myself or for everyone involved yeah and 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 so you know when you want things for a child for example an adult child you can ask for them and when they're an adult for goodness sake and even sometimes when they're still younger you know, it's their life. Mm-hmm. It's their life. And if they don't really want that, mm-hmm. you know, if we try to push our kids into something, mm-hmm. you know, when they're younger and they really don't want to do something, listen mm-hmm. to them. Mm-hmm. Goodness sakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from a mom who lost a child. I wouldn't say as a pushy mom at all. But sometimes we can look at our kids' potential yeah. and want things well, like that. Also, I think that some parents are they living don't. through their children. Yes. The same experiences yes. in their own lives. Yeah. So, you know, so, I mean, we're really talking this, this I am, I am is very individual. Right. Very so cool. keeping the lower I am ego, and I will say, for the most part, intending comes from ego right it has to Mm -hmm. because here we are sitting in this body of ours Mm -hmm. going oh well i really would like you know or whatever do your list um that's all ego Mm -hmm. okay the holiday the car the job anything that is in the physical material context that's ego Mm -hmm. the spiritual part of it when we sort of um you know I'm just going to say it almost kneel to the source and say, I am, uh, I am feeling ill. I am feeling sick. I am suffering. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're asking for release from that. Mm -hmm. You know, then it feels like we're almost a, um, that spark that I don't want to say lesser, but there's, there's something like a word I'm looking for, but, um, a very humble, uh, aspect of my being mm-hmm. that is now requesting something from a much greater power than I am on my own able to really uh, ignite on uh, ignite because I wouldn't have the skills in this brain of mine and this this I, I don't have that that has to come through us through enlightenment mm-hmm. all of a so a connection mm-hmm. an absolute um um recognition of your connection to source mm-hmm. will come as an enlightenment maybe a, a, a little awareness but an, an enlightening moment mm-hmm. it, it did for me mm-hmm. and um, i had more than one enlightening moment i've had I, like maybe a handful of them 
where I understood and I felt so connected. I, it, is a, it is an experience you can't feel just from ego. And, um, and so however it comes to us as a knowingness and you just know, yeah. And it will come to us in any way, but it is greater than coming uh, as a request just from ego. That That's my experience with it. And I just want to share that and, uh, so you can understand the difference. So I've always sort of said it's fun to request and, and intend uh, to manifest those earthly things. That can be really fun because we deserve them. And that, right? And that's how we live. Um you know, I intended my ocean view here, but I went for it thinking, and when I say intended, for, for us, like we say, we don't sit there and, and intend, but I did years ago. I had a, I actually ran a global intention practice for a couple of years based on the work of Lynn McTaggart, who wrote The Intention Experiment, and she had a little part in her book where uh, you could, um, you know, learn how to run a, an intention group around anywhere in the world, which I did for two years and absolutely loved it. And that was very much, I intend, I intend, I, you know. Mm -hmm. And so there was a period in time and working with someone else, coaching someone else through it, that we did use that language. Mm -hmm. But you and I don't use that language. Mm -hmm. uh, but wanting something, having a deep desire within mm -hmm. is kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so an example, uh, when, when I talk about the ocean view, uh, back six years ago, and my husband and I lived at the waterfront where we were living in, in our in our small city, and um, and we wanted a, a bigger place, and I actually wanted a water view. And I just thought I remember telling talking to you many many times about well, I'm not in a financial position right now to be able to afford that, and um, the universe source, the angels thought differently and landed us in in our current ocean view condo. We've been living here for six years. So what you think, and that's another piece I want to um, bring up as we get to the top of the hour here, is what you think you want, but it could not ever happen. It's not possible. I need to have this much money. I need to be here. I need to be this. I need to be that. And you put all these conditions on what you, from ego, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. think you need to have to even entertain the idea you could manifest quote unquote manifest this toss it because when the universe source uh, god anything you want to call that delivers for us it's the angels all of that mm -hmm. right it, you don't question that right no you trust you trust you trust and you believe and you have faith mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go back. I'm going to back when I edit this. And I think that we've given you quite a bit of information and things to think about. Mm -hmm. um, if not, we can revisit it in whatever we talk about in the future because it is at the core mm -hmm. of creating the life we want. Absolutely. Even, and I'm, I am going to say in, in some cases, even health, in many cases, health. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, like you have... Uh, have had the fibro diagnosis, and to date, there's no cure for fibro. I uh, uh, have had uh, bereavement, and there's uh, certainly no way to change the bereavement, but there's certainly lots of ways I can change how I want to be in bereavement, mm -hmm. which I'm co currently completely in the midst of, which is living in complete joy and acceptance of the experience in this incarnation. Mm -hmm. Again, we talk about a lot of that in our earlier episodes, how we arrived at at um, where we are in our life with these things that have presented as um, great, great uh, struggles for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's it's not impossible. In fact, it's quite possible and quite probable. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is totally probable. Yeah. You will create exactly what you want, mm -hmm. perhaps in a slightly different way mm -hmm. and not in your time frame, mm -hmm. but you will get it if it's something that you truly, truly mm -hmm. want in your heart, mm -hmm. you are aligned with, mm -hmm. and you know why you want it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any last thoughts? No, nope. believe, trust, and have faith. <laughs> and everything for the highest and best, always, always, you know, for myself, and it always, this or something better for my highest and best. With source is your driving force. <laughs> I love that. I love that too. All right, this rounds out another one. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, it's been a blast. Yes. So once again, thank. We are the best. <laughs>
Soul Sisters. See you again. Bye.